as you can see here, using these um, tree diagrams becomes a bit of a hassle. Like, do I really have to do this? It's a very time consuming process. It's physically difficult. So instead, um, the tool that you'll see that will dominate this is much simpler. Uh, instead, we'll just draw a box. And this box has a bunch of slots in it that we fit all of the different items into. So for example, I'm interested in just three letters, right? So I've got three boxes, three positions to put letters into. And I'm going to state all the same information over here, but in a much more concise form. For the first spot here, this is the um, first example with repetition, right? I've got three choices for that first letter, A, B, or C. If I allow repetition when I go to the next letter, how many choices do I have? Still three. Three choices. And then the last time, nothing has changed. I've still allowed repetition, so I'm getting three choices, right? Now, to combine all of these together, what am I going to do? I am going to multiply each step. But the key that I'm trying to get across to you, why I want us to draw these tree diagrams and make a point of it is, you can see why it is multiplication, right, and not addition, because each time your branches are branching out further and further and further. So that gives you um, the three cubed with repetition. And in exactly the same way, if I now consider the situation without repetition, without replacement, as it were, I'm still going to have three slots, but the choices change, right? I start off with three, then I start to whittle them down as I make the choices, right? In the last one, you've only got one choice left. So that gives you that three factorial uh, without repetition. <clears throat> okay. Now, one last quick example before we generalize this and then add a little bit of, a teeny little bit of new notation for you, right? Uh, this is where you consider um, an ordered selection where the order of your items matter. Um, a permutation where you've got the same length of you know, your list as the number of items on your list. Right? Well, what if I changed it? Here's a um, new color. Here's a new example for you. Instead of making a three letter word out of three letters, say for example, I made a, um, a two letter word. It's not really going to be a word, I guess, but mathematicians will use this just to have any string of letters together. Um, a two letter word with the whole alphabet. Right? So we've got A through Z to choose from. Now you can see in a situation like this, you don't want to draw the tree diagram for this, do you? Like you'll start drawing and then the sun will set and you'll think I've got better things to do with my time, right? So instead we're going to do this little simple structure here. I'm going to draw my box. How many different slots will there be in my box? Just two, right? Because you are choosing a first letter and a second letter and ta-da, there is your two letter word. Okay. Now, um, let's do it for both. If we've got uh, repetition allowed, repetition allowed, um, I will have how many choices for the first letter? 26 choices. And here I'm allowing repetition, so when I go for my second letter, it's still 26. So what's this going to equal? Well, I'm multiplying as I go left to right, so this is 26 squared, this is with repetition. And if I said without, no repetition allowed, without replacement as it were, um, how many choices do I have for my first letter? 26, I haven't picked out any. But having selected that first letter, now one is out of the running. So for my second letter, I only have 25 choices left. Okay, now in this case, because I'm not choosing you know, tw a 26 letter word, there aren't many of those I guess in the dictionary, um, I can't just say 26 factorial, can I? In the same way that I don't say 26 to the power of 26. So here, I have 26 multiplied by 25, but I can actually write this in factorial notation. Let me show you how, right? Um, if I wrote 26 factorial, it'll be 26 times 25 times 24, 23, 22, etc. right? So in other words, the ones that I'm missing are 24, 23, 22, etc. Okay? So if I added them back on, 
But then I said, I actually don't want to include them, right? I would have to divide by all of those factorials to get them to cancel out from the original number, right? And the ones that I want to get rid of are 24, 23, 22, 21, etc. That's 24 factorial, okay? Now, can you see where this expression here comes from in terms of the original question, right? Um, one more way that I can state this is to say that this factorial notation down here, it comes from the original number that you started with, right? How many you have to choose from, bless you. And then this number down the bottom, right? Um, you take all of those that you had to choose from, but you subtract the number that you are going to select. You're only going to select two of them, right? That gives me my 24 factorial. Now this guy down here, the reason why I've highlighted it in new color, this is what we're going to be using over and over again because this is the most common situation that we're dealing with, right? You often don't want to select all of the people. You just want to select a particular number out of many, many different choices, okay? So this guy down here is the main kind of permutation that you will see without replacement because we often are dealing with physical objects like people or whiteboard markers or something like that. So this guy down here gets a new form of um, notation and one that will look remarkably similar. Uh, remarkably familiar rather I should say. We write it as 26P2. That P stands for permutation. Okay? So now I'm ready to tell you what does permutation mean. Well if you have a look at the word it sort of gives you some clues, right? Um, when we think like in biology in evolutionary terms, right? Uh, what's a mutation? What does that mean when something is mutated? To, to mutate like a, a, you know, it's like, whoa, this bird has like cooler feathers than the previous generation, right? There's been a change that's been introduced. That's what mutation means, right? There's a change. That's what the mutation part of permutation means. Um, the perm part, which we get from um, permanent, or permeate, it means you can change everything all the way through. You don't just change the feathers, you don't just change like how big the muscles are of this animal or something like that. You can change anything. You can change all of these different choices, right? So to permute something means to go through every single item and then change all of the different spots, what they can be equal to, right? So that's literally what permutation means. Now, this guy here should look familiar to what kind of notation? Which topic? It's one which I talked about with the factorial, right? This looks just like this, 26 with a C, right? Now we're going to come to where this is useful in a couple of lessons time, but if you have a look at your calculator, um, I think you'll find it over on the, Paul, can I borrow yours actually? It should be over on the right hand side. It's on the, e, it's on the um, yeah, it's, um, that's right. So if you have a look above your multiplication and division buttons, you're going to see these two pieces of notation here, right? The calculator writes them like this because, um, it doesn't have that much space. Is it like that, NPR? Yeah. yeah. Or an CR. Now, we have used this guy in binomial theorem, right? At the moment, we're going to focus on this guy. We're looking at permutations. Um, this is the way that you would write it, just like you did with NCR notation. Uh, but we're indicating that order matters. It's a permutation where ABC is not the same as CBA. Okay?